Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 11th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Singapore. Microsoft Patch Tuesday, of course, brought us again a set of interesting patches. 66 vulnerabilities totally patched in this particular update. And I want to start with one particular vulnerability here that uh, I labeled as patch now and uh, this is a vulnerability in Office CVE 2017 11 8, 26. The reason I label it as patch now is it's already being exploited in the wild. It's yet another RTF vulnerability. Chihu 360 who did actually detect uh, the exploitation of this vulnerability uh, did see an RTF document with an embedded word docx document that uh, was used here anywhere between August and September to compromise a system using uh, an exploit that targets this vulnerability. On the good side, Chihu 360 did not make public a lot of details about the exploit. So as far as I know, there is no public available exploit at this point. There are two additional vulnerabilities where some details were already available public. One was a cross-site scripting vulnerability in SharePoint and the second one, a denial of service vulnerability in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Both of these have not not yet been actually exploited. These shared point cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, they're always somewhat interesting because it definitely can be used in some targeted attacks in order to, for example, extract credentials and the like from users of SharePoint. And we got a couple of SMB vulnerabilities here, but the one I think is interesting and has some potential here, and that's CVE 2017 eleven seventy eight two. This particular vulnerability is an elevation of privilege vulnerabilities and according to the notes about this vulnerability it does allow an anonymous user to access a named pipe remotely if the same anonymous user has local access to it. So not sure exactly which configurations would be affected by this, but uh, keep this in mind. And uh, if your SMB server is remotely accessible, I would definitely prioritize this patch, even though if it's only really labeled as important because uh, technically it's an elevation of privilege vulnerability, not a remote code execution vulnerability. And then I believe for the third or fourth month in a row, we do have a patch for Windows Search that patches a remote code execution vulnerability. Not sure how different this is from prior vulnerabilities. It does have a new CVE number, but in the past, sometimes we really just had a patch being applied, but then certain conditions not quite covered by the patch that were then fixed the next month. But probably more interesting almost than the bugs we did get fixed from Microsoft is that we did not get anything from Adobe yet. Now, there's still a chance that it will show up later, but there was nothing from Adobe included in Microsoft's updates and nothing on Adobe's security update page itself. But well, enough from Microsoft. We have an interesting proof of concept phishing issue in iOS. Uh, Felix Krause, he published a blog post showing how it's very trivial and I think it shouldn't really be a big surprise for an application on iOS to emulate the iCloud login box. So essentially what's happening here is that the application pops up a dialog asking you to sign into iTunes and that way captures your password. This is a fairly tricky thing to prevent. And now Apple does test applications before it adds them, but it probably wouldn't be too hard for a developer to make this event sufficiently rare where it does slip past in this test being done before the application is approved. Now, in order to properly emulate this dialog, the developer would have to know the email address of the victim because it is included in the dialog itself possible 
that a victim wouldn't even care in this case. And that's actually my real question here. How close do you actually have to make this dialogue for a user to fall for it? And thinking about myself, uh, why I would fall for such a dialogue, the one thing that often happens is that after you upgrade iOS, you're being asked for some of your passwords again. And if an application like this would be timed to display this dialog box after iOS was updated, then probably a user would be more willing to enter their password. Defense, well, don't enter your password into random dialog boxes like this. If you do believe that iOS legitimately no longer knows, remembers your, iOS, your iCloud password, then go to the settings app and enter your password there. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.